We have seen that learning does not take place in isolation. Space and time are all around us. The home, community and living environment of both teachers and learners all affect the teaching and learning experience. Teachers have to locate themselves in the wider world. They are part of many systems, not least the education system. These all impact in some way on what happens in classrooms. Remember what Kolb said about learning spaces? We can either neutralize them so that learners are all in rows, or we can set them up to suit our teaching and learning needs. If our intention as teachers is to arrange our classroom to suit our teaching purposes, then surely the arrangement will change as our intentions change. We should first consider the purpose and methods of our teaching. An activity-based lesson will need a different use of space to a whole class lesson. Similarly, a reading lesson may not require learners to be clustered together in groups. Of course, your intentions may change during a lesson. Then you have to decide on an arrangement that suits their various intentions and strategies being practiced. Peter's good lesson focused on learners working on a worksheet in groups, but he also had question and answer elements to the lesson, times when learners needed to look at the board and the overhead projector screen. The spatial arrangement that he chose facilitated all of those approaches. Good teachers need to remain flexible in both their approach and the way they organize time and space. Flexibility does not mean no planning, quite the opposite. A teacher who has planned a lesson in advance has a much clearer understanding of where she is heading and the kinds of things that need to happen along the way. If things change, then because she knows where she is going, she can reorder the lesson. This may mean shortening parts and changing her methods. Part of an OBE methodology is to ensure that learning is learner-centered. This means the teacher has to have pre-planned tasks for the learners to do. In doing this, the teacher has a preferred arrangement of space in mind, as well as a time allocation assigned for the task. Without a sense of purpose, and that usually includes planning, a classroom situation can easily end up in chaos. The teacher has a responsibility to enable learners. This means she has to facilitate systematic learning. Planning and organization are part of this responsibility. In this video, you have seen that space and time are central to all our living situations. Often, we don't have much control over these elements. But when we do, we need to manage them effectively so that we can get the most out of our learners, our teaching and ourselves.